that'll do. And then we'll trim that on. Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person. And I sell yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. So today I'm going to talk about this design and how I lengthened it. Now this was originally published in Simply Knitting last summer. I can't remember the issue, but I'll pop it on the screen. I forgot to double check. Um, and it happened to be in my size, which is very rare when it comes to magazine designs, because normally they're done in a tiny size, like size 10, and I'm obviously not the size 10. Um, but this was, they wanted to do some larger sizes. So when the editor said we wanted to fit a bust, wherever it was, I was like, oh, that might fit me. So I was quite excited. My sample knitter actually knitted it, and when he came back, uh, I tried it on before I sent it off, obviously, so I knew it fitted me, and uh, my sample knitter knitted it. So I'm very grateful to her. It's very rare for me to be able to wear something that I've actually designed for a magazine because normally it's not done in my size, uh, as I said. So, but the sleeves were kind of a little bit short. So I left a marker where uh, the original sleeve length was. Um, I can take that out now, actually, because I've lengthened it. Um, and so I lengthened the sleeves. I added just uh two four six eight ten twelve rounds on the sleeves and then i added um hang on two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty two twenty four six twenty eight thirty thirty two thirty four thirty six thirty eight forty rounds on the bottom of the body so how much is that in centimeters let's just measure because i haven't done that so that is about 11 centimetres, um, apparently. So I added about 11 centimetres to the length. Um, I probably could have done it being slightly bit longer, I think. Maybe like a couple of centimetres more, but I just got bored with knitting, so I stopped <laughs> and cast off. Um, the uh, top was knitted from the bottom up, so the cast on edge was at, was at the bottom. And then um, stitches were added at the sleeves, and it was knitted up to the top, and it was joined up here. And then I picked up stitches around here and knitted the uh, guard stitch edging on the sleeves. So this was fairly easy to unpick because that was my cast off. This was my cast on, so that was a bit more difficult to unpick. Uh, or rather it was my sample knitter's cast on, so that was a bit more difficult to unpick. Um, it was also knitted flat, not in the round. So I had to pick unpick the side seams and things like that. So I recorded the process. Uh, if you have any questions, do let me know. I've also got a couple of videos that I recorded a few years ago, probably like five years ago, I would guess, um, maybe even longer, uh, of a sweater that my mum knitted for my husband, which uh, was a little bit too big when he got it, and then he lost weight, so it was way too big. And that was knitted in the round, and how I made that smaller, basically. So I had to um, take out a section of the side, because he had to go in, and I had to... I think shorten the sleeves and tighten the neckline because the neckline was too wide. So those videos were, like I said, filmed quite a few years ago. They're not the best quality videos because they were filmed quite a few years ago and I didn't have as good a camera and I didn't have lights. Um, and I think I was filming them in like, it must have been like November, December because I think I was getting ready for him to take to Norway when we went for Christmas, which is why I'm thinking it was probably 2018. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, so they're not the best quality video, and uh, I think there's two or three of them. Anyway, I'll kind of talk you through my process or how I um, alter that uh, sweater. So I will link that below as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I post video videos weekly here on YouTube. And sometimes every other week I try and do two videos and I do a combination of podcast episodes, um, tutorials, uh, product reviews, yarn, um, knitting product reviews, um, my talk about my designs, magazine designs, things like that. So a bit of a variation of, of various things knitting related and occasionally crochet related. So if you like those kind of videos, do consider subscribing. So I've already done the first sleeve. I undid the original cast off, put a marker in, and then I knitted these rows. Now they look a little bit looser. That's from, that's probably where my magic loop thing was. 
which normally doesn't, I don't have a problem with magic loop being looser, but that looks a bit looser. I'm not 100% happy with this. Um, definitely looks looser than my original tension. I use the same needle size, um, but I might actually unpick this again and re-knit it on a smaller needle. What I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to show you how I unpick the um, cast off around the edge and then when I do this one I'm going to do it on a smaller needle and see what it looks like and if I'm happier with that and if I am I'll do the first one again. I think I may have put, made the first one a little bit too long as well so um, I may have to undo a couple of rows anyway. Right, let's... So the first thing I need to do is to work out where the um, beginning of the round was. And that's here so I normally line up the beginning of the round with the underarm so that's there so if I look here I can clearly see the uh, beginning of the round so I'm now going to unpick that and um, if you find that the beginning of the round is so well hidden away that you can't find it that has happened to me before <laughs> if I'm depends on what yarn I use it's with cotton it's more difficult I think to hide it properly um, but it has happened to me before that I hadn't, I've not been able to find the beginning of the round. And then what I've done is I've just cut a stitch at the cast off edge. That feels a bit scarier, but sometimes it's got to be done. Okay, so I'm just going to unpick this one. So if you're not sure where it's going, just try and pull gently on the thread till the cut starts unraveling. Okay, so now we are right up where I fastened off the end of the round. There we go. When I'm casting off, when I get to the end of the round, what I'll do is I'll actually go under the first stitch of the round, cast on an extra stitch, or, and then cast off that just to join it. So that's, and then I normally, when I start weeding in, I normally go back and cross the end of the round a couple of times. So to make it easier to pick these stitches up, I'm going to hold it with the wrong side facing because then I can go towards the left, which is easier. Now, don't worry too much about picking these stitches up with um, making sure they're not twisted on your needle or anything like that. Just get them on your needle. That's the main thing. And that stitch looks very loose and I'm not quite sure why. That is the first stitch. I was worried there might be another stitch there. That's, um, no, there isn't. I was worried there might be another stitch there I dropped because that first stitch looks very loose. So when I pull on this now, it will come undone. So you can unravel it all first and then put the stitches on the needle. But you might find that some stitch and, stitches unravel further down, especially because this is cotton. So it's maybe a little bit more slippery than wool um, I'm going to try and catch the stitches as I go if I put a needle in from the back to front the stitches will sit correctly on my needle but some of these first stitches don't and I'm not that fussed if they don't because I can check that as I knit the first round if you knit English style you can of course hold the yarn in your right hand but I knit continental styles so that's the way I prefer to do it you can also do this with the right side facing you which might be easier if you knit English style actually so you pull it then you put the needle in from the front to back so you pull it that way it doesn't really matter which way you do it just choose which way is easier for you I actually think the other way is easier so I'm going to do it that way um, This is fairly smooth yarn. It's an organic 100% cotton, cotton yarn. Um, it's not hasn't got that kind of slippery coating that some cotton yarns has uh, have, but it's fairly smooth. If you're knitting with a yarn that's a little bit fussy, some wool yarns do this, but yarns that have alpaca mohair in it, for example, or even some wool yarns. Sometimes, especially if the, it's been a while since you cast off, sometimes the stitches kind of like almost fell together a little bit um, and then you might find that you have to pull a little bit harder 
or even like pull the stitches apart a bit um but that's not the problem here so be a little bit careful if you have to kind of pull hard on things because you don't want the yarn to break it doesn't matter too much if the yarn does break but especially if you don't have your breaking so i'm using the same needle size which is four millimeter that i originally used to knit this edging quite often i do recommend when you're picking up stitches like this that it might be an idea to use a smaller needle size because then um it'll be easy to get into the stitches but i'm using this needle size so that's fine um i don't have a problem with this stitches are more than big enough i am going to knit this sleeve on a smaller needle because i'm not happy with the first sleeve lengthening i did i also didn't try this on when i started lengthening the first sleeve so it is actually slightly it is actually slightly longer than i needed so the sleeve is like twisting around so i'm just turned it around to untwist it and then this stitch unraveled two rows so what I'm going to do is, normally I might just leave it till the end, but I'm going to do it since I'm filming. I'm going to put the stitch that I haven't, the next stitch that I'm coming, going to unravel on the needle, just so it doesn't unravel. And then I'm going to lift that one over that way. And then, because this is garter stitch, that one should be going that way. I don't know how easy it was to see that, but okay, let's pull that needle out again and carry on. Normally, if I unravel too many stitches in one go and one stitch unravels a few rows, I'll just put that stitch on the needle. And then when I work the first round, I'll deal with anything like that because I find that easier. So I don't have too much to go now. Okay, so I've undone all of those stitches. Just check when I get back the beginning of the round that I haven't missed a stitch and I haven't. And then I just normally have a quick look around just to make sure I haven't missed a stitch. I once unravel. If I go around and I find that one stitch has unraveled and I haven't seen it, then what I'll do is I'll get one of my um, removable stitch markers and just use that to secure it. But no, there's no loose stitches here. So now I'm going to, next time I take a break, I'm going to carry on knitting on this. And if I remember, I'm going to try and change the needle to a smaller needle size because I'm not 100% happy with the way I did it on the first sleeve. Here, it just looks a little bit loose. I don't know why. And then um, I also need to unpick this edge, which is a cast on edge. So that's a little bit more difficult. So I'll come back and show you how to do that next. Okay, I've lengthened both the sleeves now. Um, it's You can definitely see where I lengthened it, where I started knitting. Um, it does look a little bit looser, even though I went down a needle size. I'm hoping once I've steamed it, it that will even out a bit, I hope. Uh, let's see what the other sleeve looks like. But I did go down the uh, needle size and I redid the first sleeve as well. I'm wondering here whether I've done two right side rows together, or whether it's just where the stitches have stretched, because it was the original cast off that I undid. Um, anyway. The sleeves are done. I'm not going to worry too much about that. So then I thought I would undo the um, edge at the bottom of the body. This is oh, nearly knocked my camera over there. Uh, this is the cast on edge. So it's a little bit more tricky to do. And I thought I'd knitted this in the round or that my sample knitter had knitted this in the round. And then when I got sat down to do this, I realized it was knitted flat and seamed. So I've spent quite a few minutes trying to undo the um find the end and undo it so on this side i managed to find one end and i managed to undo it and then i couldn't find the other end that's that was the end i found i managed to undo that so that's the end that fastens my stitch 
uh, but I couldn't find the other end so in the end I cut a bit and I've done the same thing here just cut a bit across here and I think I'm going to cut that bit there as well because I can't it's not really unraveling so I obviously probably didn't cut the right bit but nothing I haven't cut any stitches that are unraveling you have to be a little bit careful when you cut just if it's a bit you're going to undo anyway, then it's fine. But if, it, if you cut stuff that you're not going to undo, then obviously that could be a bit of a disaster. So there we go. Some of these bits hopefully come out. I don't really need to undo this whole seam. I'm going to undo it that far. Um, and then I'm going to unpick. So I'd hoped I could do this um, in the round. But having said that, because it's got to stitch, it is easier to do it back and forth. So I'm going to do this side first. So that's where I have an end. I just checked the other side here. There is no end. So this must be where I ended with my tail. Um, so because I did, or my sample knitter rather, did this on the four millimeter needle, um, because my other garter stitch was a bit looser, I don't want to do this on a smaller because this is the bottom of the body and I, you know, I'm happier if that's a little bit looser um, as long as it doesn't look too uneven. So I'm going to do it on a 375 millimeter. because I think maybe my knitting is a bit looser than my sample knitter. I'm worried if I do it on four millimeter that it's going to look uneven. So I can't get that undone. So what I'm using is a, just a sewing needle because it makes it easier to the stitches out so let's just cut that because I couldn't get that undone so what I'm going to do is unpick the cast on so I'm gonna to have to do it on this side and then on the other side so this side the front of the back and this is about my only <laughs> chow gu needle that's actually kinky because chow gu famously don't kink but this one is but I don't know I can't find any of my other needles that are this length I've only got really really long ones um, so I'm not sure why. Right, that one has unraveled a little bit more than I wanted it to. So I'm just going to loop that through. There we go. So I'd like to just undo the cast on row. And the easiest thing is if I hold that in that hand, there we go, and go that way. I'm really struggling at the moment to see in my screen exactly what I'm filming so I'm hoping that you can actually see what I'm filming so um I'm gonna have to undo the cast on edge which is a bit trickier because if it's the cast off edge you can just pull on it and it comes undone depending on what cast off it is but unless it's a sewn cast off most of the cast offs come off fairly easily the cast on edge is not quite as good because you have to actually pull the yarn out now what happens when you do this is that the yarn can get a little bit kind of tatty and split a bit and things like that so I do quite often find that um, the yarn I'm undoing with unless I need to keep it because I'm really short of yarn which I'm not with this I have quite a lot of this yarn left I think um, I may cut it because it makes it more difficult Pull it out this is also going to probably take me a, quite a long time so i might there we go no no my tripod seems really wobbly today i don't know why i think it's this um this wooden bit is a wooden square that i bought years ago to use for taking photos uh flat lace for instagram and stuff and um i think it's kind of warped slightly so it's a bit unsteady and at the moment it's quite wobbly so the thing about this is that it, it can be depending on what kind of cast on you do probably i do the long tail cast on i don't know which cast on is more tricky to undo um but you have to just kind of work out where this end goes if you get really stuck and you can't so see there i only pulled like two strands out this yarn is, um, because it's cotton, it is a little bit splitty. A lot of cotton yarns are more splitty than wool yarns. Um, it was fine when I was knitting with it. Um, it's an organic cotton from Stylecraft, I think it is. Um, but it is, when you 
trying to unpick it like this it can sometimes split a bit so if you're not sure where to pull just try and pull on the tail and see if you can see anything moving if you have a yarn that's slightly variegated it is better because it does move sometimes it can be easier to see so this yarn is getting a little bit splitty as you can see so that's the next stitch so i'm just as i'm undoing these stitches i prefer to catch the stitches as i go um where does that yarn go as you can see this is tricky so you have to decide when you're doing these alterations is it going to be worth it this is something you're going to wear or the person you've made it for is going to wear um, sometimes I think it's actually easier to cut it if you say you have want to um, re-knit the rib because if if this was knitted in rib I couldn't just unpick the cast on because this was knitted from the bottom to the top so this is the cast on and if I'd done a rib I couldn't unpick the cast on and knit the rib in the opposite direction going top down because it wouldn't match up with the rib going from the bottom up um, so if this was rib I would have to actually cut the whole rib off which means that I would actually cut the yarn above the rib and then unravel a whole round and sometimes I think that's easier but because this is guard decision because this sweater is quite wide because it's a bit uh, boxy um there are a lot of stitches i don't really i already have a few rows rounds of um garter stitch here and i just want to make the garter stitch longer and i can knit garter stitch in the opposite direction and it should be fine i think i've done that before but if it was rib i would take the whole rib off and re-knit it um i can't lengthen the lace pattern because the lace pattern is knitted from the bottom up so it's going in that direction so if I was going to lengthen the lace pattern, I would have to knit a piece from the bottom up and then graft it onto the sweater. And to be quite honest, I don't really want to do that. So um, I would, I'm happy with a wide garter stitch section at the bottom. I just feel like because this is one of the few sweaters I've designed for magazines that are actually in my size that I want to use it. But I think I will get more wear out of it if it's longer because I don't really wear cropped sweaters. It looks really nice with a dress I have, but it's not a dress that I wear a lot. So this is getting quite messy, which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to cut this, and it's because the yarn's splitting. So like I said earlier, I'm not bothered about keeping this yarn because I have lots of it. Um, okay, so I lost a stitch there. So I'm gonna just put that on there. And then we're going to carry on. I think I'm going to go and do it and sit and do this in front of the telly because we have done two, four, six, seven stitches. And I can't remember how many I've got and I haven't double checked the pattern, but there are a lot more stitches than. Um, so I think sitting here and doing all of it in front of the camera is going to be a little bit boring for you and a little bit uncomfortable for me but it just shows you how difficult this can be um if this was a sweater that i didn't particularly like or a color i didn't like or something i didn't think i'd wear i don't think i'd bother doing this but because i do quite like this sweater and i do actually quite like the color it's a color i would wear um i wish it was a little bit of a brighter pink it's kind of like um faded peachy pink but I, it's a color I like so I will wear this when I but I'm more likely to wear it if it's slightly longer so you basically just have to fight with this to get it undone um, I think maybe what kind of different cast on methods might be more difficult I was just saying I normally do a long tail cast on I'm just thinking I didn't knit this so I don't actually know what cast on method my sample knitted did I don't think it was a long tail because it doesn't look like the long tail cast on uh, but I don't know which cast on method she uses so um, this could be anything <laughs> um, I feel like I'm having more problems than I normally do in doing this because um, I have done this before so I don't know if this is a different cast on method I might message her and say ask which cast method she normally uses um 
or maybe I should do a little sample piece at some point. Um, do a few different ca common custom methods and see which ones are the easiest and most difficult to unpick. Now what I don't want to do, I'm happy to cut into the cast on row. That doesn't bother me because I'm going to get rid of that yarn anyway. I don't really want to cut in and ruin anything like in the row above the cast on row. But can you see how this has just got really annoying? Anyway. Yeah, this is going to be very frustrating. Okay. I'm going to go and sit down and do this in front of the telly. And then <laughs> we'll come back and show you what it looks like when I've finished. I've now finished adding the length to the body. I kind of thought I would add the same amount of length on the body as I did on the sleeves. So on the sleeves, I add a length from here. Now my tension is different from that um, of my sample knitter who knitted this originally. I don't know whether this, my tension is different or this because this was obviously blocked must be like nearly a year ago now uh, because it was published last summer so I'm assuming it's nearly a year ago since we actually worked on this or since my sample knitter knitted this. So when I did the sleeves I think I mentioned it I went down a whole uh, two needle sizes so the original was knitted on four millimeter I went down to three and a half because four millimeter just looked really loose. It also here which is kind of where I picked up it just looks not great to be quite honest. Um, I don't know whether I've accidentally. I don't know. I don't know whether I've picked up like one bro too little. I don't know. Anyway, I think once I'm wearing it, you won't really notice it. Um, on the body, I didn't really want to go down a needle size because I was worried it might pull it in a little bit. So I carried on. I didn't use four millimeter. I went down to three point seven five. Difference quarter of a millimeter is not a lot of difference really. Um, it still doesn't look as even as it does here. So this is where the original um, got the stitch edging finished, and then I've added all this. This looks looser and a bit more uneven, but that could just be because obviously this hasn't been blocked. Now I'm not going to bother blocking the sweater again. I don't think it needs washing. So what I'm going to do is just steam it um, once I finished it and then see what it looks like. If it still looks a bit uneven, maybe I'll wash it and block it, but I don't know, we'll see. So I've done one side because this was obviously knitted flat, so I've sewn up one side. So I thought I would show you how I'm gonna sew up the other side. I had to join in yarn a couple of times. So I have one strand there, one strand there. Now that's the strand, of the, yeah, that's the strand from when I originally and pick the cast on edge. So I need to weave that in. And then I had to join a new ball of yarn here. So I've got two ends here to weave in. And then I have this mess from when I unpicked it. This mess here, which looks a bit messy. I feel like one of those, I don't know, whether one of those was for, oh, there we go. That's why I was wondering whether one of those would come out if I pulled on it. So that has, so I'm going to leave that one because that's fairly short. I'm going to leave that one to last. And I'm actually going to start sewing up from the bottom. Now I deliberately left the tail a bit longer so I could use that for sewing up. So normally if I was sewing up garter stitch, I would do a garter stitch. It's not like a proper mattress stitch. But it's a garter stitch where you basically get the two garter stitch edges lying side to side completely flat seam. Um, I do have a tutorial for that which I will link below. I won't do that here because I have a proper seam here so I really want this seam to match that. I'm going to do the more traditional mattress stitch which is a little bit difficult to do in garter stitch. Now that last stitch ended up being a little bit loose and floppy. I tried to do something different to tighten it and then I messed up so then I had to unpick it and then it got became looser and floppier but we can fix that so I don't normally like using the end to sew up with I tend to join in a new end and then just weave in the cast on the cast off end but um 
I decided because I have a couple of ends higher up I need to weave in I thought I would leave that end a little bit longer and use that to sew up with so I'm just going to go across like that and then go back to the first side just to like neaten this section a little bit okay um I need to do something about that because that's quite loose and floppy so I think what I will do is go up a little bit and then I'll come back and fix that so let's go across here again just to make sure that that join down here is neat and there we go so I just want to back on like almost like a figure of eight a little bit let's just I don't think I have a tutorial on mattress stitch, but I do cover it in my finishing techniques online course. So if you are interested, do check that out. I'm going to go in here and under a couple of ridges and back out again. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going about one stitch in from the edge, going under a couple of garter stitch ridges, back into the same hole I went out the last time, under two garter ridges. And out again and then I'm actually just going to I need to tidy that loop there up so I'm going to tighten that a bit and then I'm just going to go across and through to the back of the fabric and then I'm going to come down here and then I'm going to grab that loop and go back up again so I'll just tighten that loop up and stop it being loose and floppy and accidentally working its way onto the um, right side there we go back out to the top of the fabric again and then we're going to go down here and the two ridges and out down here and the two ridges and out and the two ridges and out I'm not being sort of like as fussy and accurate as I normally am I don't really like doing um, like mattress stitch we got the stitch I prefer doing um, what I was talking about beginning I don't really know what that's called but a better way of seeming got the stitch but um, I also want this seam to like match the rest of the sweater so that's why we're doing it this way there we go okay so pull that so when you pull it tight just hold on to where you pulled it tighter last time so you can pull against it and if you've done it correctly it should just all kind of zip up neatly and make sure you don't pull it so tight that it starts to pucker. Now I'm coming to this point here where I got those two ends. So I just need to make sure they're sewn inside. I've got quite a long end here. So I'm going to carry on because I thought I could use these other ends to carry on if I needed to. But I, got, I do have quite a long end left. So I'm going to keep going and just tuck those ends in on the inside. And then I'll deal with those later. So I'm just going to do the rest of this seam quickly and then come back and show you how, how I'm going to neaten off all those ends on the inside. So now I've got all the way up here where I finish on picking to and I got the um, yarn on the right side of the fabric so I need to take it through to the wrong side of the fabric so I'll just take it across and through and then I can tidy up and weave in all these ends. So 
let's do this one first that I'm working with now I have the when you're weaving the ends into a seam the idea is so you try and take them in different directions so I got those two down there I got that one there and I got two here and I got one there so I got quite a few down this way so I'm going to take this end and go up carry on up along this seam um just to get that out of the way you don't want to really want to weave in all the ends all in the same place because that can make it a little bit chunky um so i'm going to just go up a little bit here you can go i quite often will go through the actual seam you can also go through like the top end here see that I've taken this a little bit further than I probably need to just because I've got other ends to weave in as well. And then there we go. And then I'll just go back a couple of stitches. There we go. Okay, apologies if my camera position has changed. I knocked it over, knocked my tripod over. It's a little bit precarious the way I film this really. Okay, so now we've got that quite quite short end. My needle is quite big. My needle is quite close colour to the yarn I'm knitting with. So um, I'm going to just go through like that and then take this through. I like these needles. This one is a Nipro one. Clover do similar ones as well, but Clover ones are like silver ones, matte silver ones, grey ones, um, because they've got such a big eye. So there's no problems threading this needle so i do really like these kind of needles but nipro uh knitters pride in the us i'm assuming also does it um and clover does it my favorite ones are actually i used to get some from clover that i really like but um i've lost most of them um and i had these from nipro which are the same type of needle really There, I'm not going to go very far with this one. So this is one of the ends from when I picked, I think. I don't know. There we go. That's that one done. If you found that you have a lot of ends in the same area, you could take one across the fabric here. I don't want to do it up here with this lace. I try and avoid weaving in ends into lace sections. Obviously, I can't always avoid it. If it's all over lace, it's got to be done. But um, I could take one across the fabric here, but I think if you can weave it in into the seams, that is better. And then I'm going to go back up again a few stitches. You don't need to, unless it's a very open fabric, a very slippery yarn, you really, and even then you probably don't need to, but you don't need to weave it in back and forth several times. Um, it is unlikely to be come, to come undone. Okay, so this one I'm going to go down. And the reason why I like to go actually into the seam like this is because it does reinforce the seam a little bit as well. Which I don't know what it really needs, but... There we go. And then we'll just go back a little bit. And then one final bit, that one. Oops, it's come out of the... That's only a problem with these types of needles because the um, eye is so big. The yarn does come out. But if you struggle to thread needles, these are not good for like sewing on buttons and things because they're usually too big for the holes in the buttons. So I do have some smaller needles as well that I use for sewing on buttons. I think that'll do. Okay, there we go. Probably not my neatest seam, but that's fine. It looks okay-ish. Yeah, 
Okay, so that's it. Um, I'm going to steam press this now, just to see if I can even this out a little bit. Um, and then if it still looks a bit scruffier, I do think this section here looks scruffier than that section. Could be this is a different knitter. You can see that it looks like there's a slight difference in the color, but that might just be because this top se section was washed and locked, and this section hasn't. It's definitely the bright yarn from the same dye lot and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go and steam it now, and then we'll try it on and see what it's like. So I'm trying to use my selfie stick to do this, so you can see the whole length of me um and i'm not very good at using a selfie stick so this is the sweater i have finished it let me see if i can lengthen this a bit so you can see a bit better hang on okay so that's kind of where it falls on me kind of hip height i think if i wasn't wearing anything underneath it, it kind of falls to where my tummy is kind of the biggest <laughs> so, i think or where i got like a tummy bulge so I think if I wasn't wearing a top underneath I wouldn't be very happy with this length but I'm likely to wear this with like a at least a t-shirt underneath today I've got a long sleeve top on underneath so yeah I'm quite happy with the length it's quite boxy quite big so that was where that was the original length which was kind of like waist height for me which is okay if I'm wearing a dress um, I had a black, I have a black dress that I worn it with a couple of times, and that was fine. But I don't wear dresses that often, so I think this I will wear a lot, get a lot more wear out of it. Sleeves, I didn't lengthen the sleeves as much, but they are now kind of wrist length, and I like it. I'm very happy with it. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, do ask below this video. I know that. Um, making alterations to garments can be scary but if it means that you're actually going to wear it a bit more then that's a good idea one thing i said in the video which i forgot to mention in the introduction was that or which i showed in the video was that where i started knitting my garter stitch is not as even as my sample knitter's garter stitch now i did press it and it has gotten better so that is where where that yellow marker is is where um it was it has gotten better after i pressed it it's still not perfect i think if i wash it it would probably even out more um but i can't bother to wash it till it's actually wet uh, the original sample after it was knitted i washed it blocked it dried it this one when i wash it i would probably just lie flat to dry to smooth it out and then uh, rather than doing like a full-on blocking with stretching and pins and all that kind of stuff and then um i'll probably just iron it afterwards because this is 100% cotton so I should be fine um anyway I'll put the link to where you can find this pattern anyway thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it thanks for watching and I'll see you next time